Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us today. Let's pour out our praise to our powerful God, O oh, Almighty God. Let's worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to declare the power of God. We believe God. We believe that nothing is impossible to you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We believe, God, we believe for 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace and for the mercy. Hallelujah. We pour out our praise to you, O oh Lord. How precious is your name. Searching heart, this Jesus, how precious. Mender of a million shattered parts, this Jesus, relentless. Oh. This Jesus, so wonderful, so beautiful, so kind and lovely, isn't he, isn't he, beyond compare, treasure rich and rare, marvelous and holy, isn't he? Isn't he giver of a grace that now could earn this Jesus extravagant? Keeper of his promise and his word, such goodness, such faithfulness. Marvelous and holy, isn't he? Isn't he? Oh, yes, isn't he? Isn't he? Oh, yes, isn't he? Isn't he? Oh, yes, isn't he? Isn't he? Jesus, my Jesus. 
Lesson four, Old Testament servants of God. We're going to look at the life of Jacob today. Very interesting, colorful character. But we've got lots to learn from this man too in his life. Father, I pray that you would teach us from the lives of the saints of old, that as we learn their strengths, we learn their mystics, that we will find the grace from you, O God, to live a life that will glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Genesis 27, it talks about how Jacob came about in his life, and I would encourage you to read the, the, the different chapters that talk about his life. In Genesis 27, 1 to 4, it says, Now it came to pass when Isaac was old, and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son. And he answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Let me give you a little bit of background. Um, Jacob was not just the only son. He was a twin son, born to Isaac. And, um, you know, he uh, was born second after his brother. And here was... Um, Isaac, when he was all ready to die, part of the tradition before you die is to lay hands on the older son, pass on your blessings, your patriarchal blessings, and pass on the majority of your inheritance, literally, to that older son. And so the story goes that, um, of course, uh, Jacob tricked the father into receiving it, tricked the brother into selling it. And so we want to look at that. A uh, profile of Jacob, um, very briefly, Jacob, son of Isaac and Rebekah, twin brother of Esau, husband of the sisters Rachel and Leah, Leah, and the father of 12 sons who became the ancestors of the 12 tribes of Israel. Father of the 12 tribes, third in the Abrahamic line of God's plan. Rachel, his beloved wife, mother of Joseph and Benjamin, died giving birth to Benjamin. Leah, her older sister, also married to Jacob, the unloved wife who bore her husband six sons and a daughter. And of course, you know, Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob. Um, so, I want to begin by asking you this question. What determines your identity? Because the name Jacob is interesting. We know him with one name, Jacob. But then, there were two brothers. And two brothers who were in contention, literally. From the day that they were about to be born, they were in contention. One wanting to get out before the other, to be the elder twin, until the moment that they separated because of all the problems. But what determines your identity in life? Even as we look at the two twin brothers. In Proverbs 22 verse 1, it says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. So I want to look at the, the, the two brothers who incidentally ended up having three names each. How do you end up with three names? And I don't suggest that you do that in life because it gets very complicated and it can be very costly when you have to legally change your name, <laughs> like someone I know. <laughs> so brother, both brothers had three names. Esau's three names. When he was born, his, he was named Esau. He was born very different from his brother because he was fully formed, and he had hair all over his body like a full-grown man, which is very strange. Probably some genetic issue. And this prompted all those present to give him the name Esau which translates as being made of form, full, whole. But at the age of 15, he was given a second name, Edom, which Hebrew, in Hebrew means red. And the impetus for his name was the foolhardy decision to sell his birthright to Jacob in turn for a pot of red lentil soup. You know, and I mean, so first is your God-given name because of what you look like, but second, your name is given because of who you are, not just what you look like. So his second name, Red, was because of his decision to sell his birthright. 
So the decisions in your life, the choices in your life, sometimes determine who you are. And of course, the third name that was given, some say that say Esau's residence was a third name of his. After his hairy appearance, Esau acquired an estate in the land of Seir, inhabited by the Horites. He waged warfare and he conquered them. And from then on, Mount Seir became the homeland of Esau's descendants. And by the way, years later, when, when they were, the Israelites were trying to cross through Mount Seir on the way to the Promised Land, the Edomites stubbornly refused, forcing the Jews to take a circular route. I mean, that tells you about the man. First, what he looked like. Two, the choices, bad decisions that determined who he was, what people knew of him. And third, your name also talks about your legacy. His legacy was that he was someone and his family and his, his uh, ancestry, uh, his descendants all end up being unfriendly to God's people. I mean, I don't want that kind of name. So think about it. Then we come to Jacob's name. Jacob had three names. The name Jacob is derived from the Hebrew verb, verb means to follow. In other words, the day he was born, he grabbed the heel of his brother because, he, you know, tradition says that he was trying to pull the brother back in. He wanted to be first. So from the moment he was born, he was named he who follows on another's heel. And he didn't want that name. Some of us, we are born, our parents give us a name, we don't like it. Right? But it can determine some of our traits in our life. Second name, Jacob's intention to undermine his brother above his birthright and father's blessing also earned him the name supplanter or deceiver. Genesis 27 says, Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright and now look, he has taken away my blessing. So again, choices in life. He was known as one who would cheat and deceive and try to get what didn't belong to him. Third name. God blessed Jacob and gave him a new name. You see, when you do right, your legacy can change. Your destiny can change. He gave him the name Israel and with it a new identity. Jacob was no longer associated as the one who's the younger brother, the one who followed, as the swindler or the trickster of the past, he was now a new creation. And that bodes well for us because we can change our legacy, we can change our destiny. The name given to you when you're young and they say you're a troublemaker, you're useless, you're nobody, you're a black sheep, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And maybe you make some wrong decision and people say, oh, you're a swindler, you're a thief, you're an ex-con, doesn't matter because if you choose God and you wrestle with God and say, God, I want your blessing, not my old life, then you can be a new creation. So that's a powerful lesson for us there. I want to move on. What determines your identity? The twin brothers were very different. Esau was a hunter. In other words, he was the original survivor. The original survivor. He lived off the land. He was self-sufficient. And the thing that marked him that's different from his brother, he loved fleshly things. Flesh. He hunted. Let me say this. If, you, if your life is all about, I feel, I desire, I just let it all hang out and do whatever my, my flesh tells me, well, you're not going to be very, very successful in life. You're not going to find the blessings of God the way that Jacob did. Then, of course, Jacob was a wrestler. Different from his brother, Jacob was born grabbing onto his twin brother. He wrestled with his past again and again. He wrestled with broken relationships. His relationship was broken. He spoiled it with his father. He broke it with his brother. You know, if you read the story, you find that years later when the brother was going to meet up with him. He was so afraid the brother was going to kill him. I mean, that's how bad it was. So he wrestled with what he wanted, his past. He wrestled with a broken relationship. But the main thing is, and, and for us, the lesson is this, he wrestled with God. 
So you don't want to just wrestle with your past. You don't, want, you don't want to wrestle things out of other people's lives. What you see, I want this, I grab it from them. You don't want to wrestle with broken relationships because of your bad decisions. If you want something out of life, your, de your, your destiny, then wrestle with God. In prayer, wrestle with God and say, God, I want you. I want what's best from you. And, and the main thing is he loves spiritual blessings. Genesis 32 tells us, you know, the angel or God came and he, he, he wrestled with him all night. In the morning came, he says, let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. It tells me this, sometimes we need to be persistent. Sometimes we need to just want it so bad. And God wants to see that. You know, that's why the Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. You know? And so he wants to see how we really want it. And point number two. So today's decisions can determine your destiny. It's important. Both made choices. Both their choices determine their destiny. You see, you reap what you sow. What you choose today will come back to bite you tomorrow. Jacob tricked Esau into selling his birthright. You know, years later, it came back to bite him. He sowed trickery. He reaped trickery when he worked for Laban, his father-in-law, seven years. And when he married, finally gave, he was supposed to marry Rachel. When he finally opened up the veil, he found that it wasn't Rachel, but it was Leah. He got tricked himself. So he had to work never another seven years. And his father, again, was trying to trick him about the cattle and so many other things. Let me say this. What you sow, you will reap. And, but you can break it. You can break it when God comes into your life. So Jacob the trickster is tricked himself later in life. Second thing, instant gratification can cost you. Your decisions today will cost you tomorrow. You cannot make a bad deal and not pay the consequences of it. That's what Esau did. He said, I want to eat this bowl. I want this soup. I want this thing so bad. I want it now. I'll pay anything for it. Yes, you will. And that's what happened. He paid for it. Made a bad deal. Allowed Flash to take over. He had his bowl of soup. He had his, his gratification. You know, he enjoyed it, but he paid for it. And which tells me something that when you talk about instant gratification, all of us are driven by something or by someone. You're driven to it. Esau didn't just come to that place. He was driven by that all his life. He was a carnal man, a man drivel, driven by fleshly desires. And um, we've got to know what drives us. If that's all that drives you in your life, then that's all you're going to get and nothing more, right? But if you're driven by, let me say this, if you're driven by fleshly things, you will just get fleshly outcomes. And fleshly outcomes, just as instantly gratifying they are, they are instant, they're here, and they're gone, and they're no more. It's temporal. Whereas Jacob was driven by something more eternal. He fought with the spirit, in the spirit world with a spiritual being, and he said, I will not let you go. I want spiritual things because they last forever. That's your destiny. Esau learned nothing from his grandfather's compromise that produced an Ishmael. We've got to learn from our forebears. We've got to learn from people around us and see, hey, you know, they made this mistake. They went for that. They, 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 they sowed wild oats and they reaped the whirlwind. And Esau's greed was a compromise to the promise again. He was a son of the flesh, not a son of promise. And it led to him losing his inheritance. I don't want that. I don't want to lose my spiritual inheritance. I want everything that God has promised me, even through the life of Abraham. So when we go look at this discussion, two questions. If it is true that you reap what you sow, is there a way to escape the consequences? the reaping of the seeds you've sown? Is there a way? And how did, how did Jacob 
make a final cut. You know, he, he tricked, he got tricked, and he was about to be tricked again. Go read about the story about the cattle, the spotted and speckled one, and find out, you know, how God can break that chain of reaping and sowing. Should Christians change their names if it has an evil or negative connotation? Should you be changing your name every other week? Those are some things that people have asked me before. I throw it back at you. Go discuss it. Talk about it. If you can't find an answer, then call me and we will talk about it. God bless you all. Have a great week. May you discover God's joy even in His words. And may you discover God's blessings even in your sacrifices. God bless you all.